Howdy. In this month's Tips for the Woodsman, let's go on the collector circuit and find some really cool stuff that you can use to make some money or more importantly, decorate that cool man cave in your house. Let's start by taking a look at some neat ammunition boxes. You'll really be amazed at the number of people that collect old cartridge boxes and what an incredible amount of money some people pay for rare and desirable cartridge boxes. This is one that I've had for quite a while. It's made by the Winchester Western Company and it's a Super X 220 Swift. This is probably out of the late 40s, early 50s. It's full, never been fired, and some collectors will pay up to $40, $50 for this particular box of ammo. I think I paid about $6 for this at a gun show. Here is a really cool box of old Weatherby 340 Magnum ammunition. Again, a full box of ammunition. The thing that a lot of collectors desire about this is you can see Weatherby's got some interesting animals on the front. Back in the 40s, 50s, and early 60s, the manufacturing companies really took an interest in how their ammunition looked on the counter, unlike some of the ammunition guys today that just give you a blue or green box. These boxes really have a lot of class, and I think it helped promote the sale, in my opinion. Really a nice box of ammo. Again, this is probably about worth $50, $60 to a Weatherby collector. This is another nice box by uh, Winchester in the 35 Remington autoloader. This particular box goes with my Model 81 Remington, which again is kind of a neat little collector's item. It's chambered in 35 Remington. Again, a full box advertising stainless, non-mercuric primers. Again, pictures telling you bullet weights. Really a classy little box, and again, this one's probably 35, 40 bucks to a collector. Another highly collectible item are old powder cans. This particular can is a bullseye smokeless powder, probably out of the late 40s, early 50s, metal can, nice bright decorative label on it, full of powder, got instructions on the back, special notices, warnings for newbie reloaders. You'll be amazed at what people will pay for these old powder cans. Not only do people collect old cartridge boxes, but there's a vast number of people out there that collect old powder cans. Watch for them at garage sales, at gun shows, and when you're out there in the field hunting at a rancher or farmer's house, says, hey, you don't have any old powder cans or ammunition boxes banging around, do you? You'll be amazed at what you'll find. Another item I really like are old spurs. With all of the cowboy action shooting going on out there, there's a tremendous interest in Old West memorabilia. I found these old spurs at a gun show. I just happened to get there early in the morning as one individual was setting stuff up on his stand, and he had quite a collection of these old spurs. This one's really unique. You can see the rowel on the wheel on there. It's kind of a pretty snazzy deal. I would like to be able to put this in a VCR and have it go back and tell me who wore it. Was it, you know, some old Spaniard? Was it, you know, Pancho Villa? Who knows where this spur may have been during its life. Here's another example of a great spur as well, and I have a pair of these. Now, this spur, I think, came out of Mexico because the Mexican uh, vaqueros and stuff were really dolled up in the Old West in the 1880s, and you can see, if we zoom in close here, that this one's got inlays of silver in it. So the guy who wore this, he was the stud duck in his particular area. Again, a pretty nice rowel, unique designs for leather strap on it, holding it on the side, a nice well-made spur. So now I'd like to show you my best pair of spurs. This was a pretty unusual find. You'll, you'll usually find spurs in pairs, but not always. I did manage to stumble across these, and these are just absolutely priceless. If you look closely now, you can see how ornate they are. They've got some engraving on them, some silver inlay, and the tiny rowels. This was probably a little more compassionate uh, cowboy than we saw in the earlier spurs with the big pointed uh, rowels on them. Look at the uh, interesting little flower escutcheon there on the sides. I had picked this particular set of spurs up for a $50 bill, and I took him back to my table, and it was later in the show, an old guy come by, and uh, he was one of the Old West reenactors, and he said, uh, didn't I see you buy some spurs earlier in the show? And I said, yeah, and I brought them out and set them on the table, and he kind of looked them over and thought, oh, yeah, boy, he says, those are pretty nice. He said, uh, you want to sell them? I said, no, not really. I said, they're just, they're pretty classy, and I'd kind of like to keep them for my collection. He said, well, 
I don't know what you paid for him, but he says, I'll give you 750 bucks for him right now. So for a $50 investment, not too bad of a return should I decide to sell them. All right, let's take a look at another item that's kind of rare as well. This is an old blasting box made by the folks at DuPont. And I'll kind of turn it here so we can get a close-up on the camera there for you. But these are pretty rare. This is an old blasting box that they used to set dynamite off with in the old mines or quarries. Kind of a dual purpose with this particular machine. If your love life is lagging a little bit, just go ahead and hook the wife or girlfriend up to this and give her a charge. It may bring a little spark back into your love life. So this item, I think I paid 100 or $125 for it, and you'll see them at different antique shows for 4 and a half to $500, depending upon their condition. It's really nice that, you know, they've got a, a plate on them. They're usually made out of oak. Check to see that somebody hasn't boogered the screws up or run them anyway. And this is a little charge handle here, and you push down on that to uh, get an electrical current through those two poles. Here's something that you don't see every day, and this is uh, another rare find. This is an old German World War I backpack. And you'll notice that it's, it's got the hair still on it, so probably something more of a, of a camouflaging effect, effect maybe uh, was a whole lot easier to do than make the leather by peeling it off. But it's a pretty ornate pack. You can see it's got a little document pouch there and then the buckles and stuff on the back. And I'm going to use this in my guy's room to set up on a mannequin like he's an old soldier or maybe just an old hunter. A neat rare piece. I paid $25 for this, and it's worth about $100, $125. So next time you're rummaging around at the attic at Matilda's or out in the barn at Granddad's, keep an eye open for an old pack like this. You'll be amazed at what those old timers have rat holed and set off in the corner somewhere. Now let's take a look at one of my favorite things, and that's old bear traps. I've been collecting traps for quite a few years, and these are some of my favorites. These are new houses, and the new house model or brand, if you will, is probably by far the most collectible. Not necessarily the most valuable, but it is a very well-recognized name. This is a number 15 new house. Note the long chain on it that's either attached by a cable uh, to a tree to keep the bear from running off with it. This particular trap belonged to a dear friend of mine in town by the name of Bob Root, and I'd always taken a shine to it. He was one of the large landowners in the area. And this particular trap has caught over 50 bears. So it really has a, a special place in my heart because it was actually used to trap bears in our area. So when you're watching around for traps like this, note the conditions, check the pans out, and make sure that you can read uh, the numbers on them. New house, look for overall condition on them. Make sure the teeth are in good shape. The trap hasn't been welded on. There are a lot of neat books out there that will give you some real interesting uh, tips and tricks in identifying traps from different eras. Make sure that it's got the chain and the ball swivel on it. Again, those add value to the trap. These particular traps are worth probably six to seven hundred dollars, depending upon where you're uh, where you're shopping for them. I've seen them go as high as eleven to twelve hundred dollars in Anchorage, Alaska, at some estate auctions. So again, they're very valuable. I paid a uh, hundred dollars for this one, and then my friend gave me that one, which was quite a gift. So those are a few collectible items that you can use to spruce up your life and decorate your man cave, and most importantly, make a little bit of money in these tough economic times. I'm Daryl Holland for AGI.